In this video we're going to model this fairly simple piece of geometry and we're going to start by creating the base geometry then we're going to add the control edges and finally we're going to have a look at the geometry and we're going to modify the mesh in order to get the loops that we want. We're going to start this by modeling the top surface and you can see we have a semi-circular shape at the front here. So we're going to start this with a disk and take it from there. So let's add a disk and I'm going to get rid of the segments. For the rotation segments I'm going to use 16. I don't want to go too low with the rotation segments because when we subdivide the object I make a copy of this. You can see the subdivided version is slightly smaller than the unsubdivided object and the fewer segments we have the more it's going to shrink. So if I bring this down to 8 you see this disk gets considerably smaller and of course the more geometry we use the closer we stay to the original size of the object. But I don't want to go that high so 16 should do the trick here. Because we have this opening here we can also use an inner radius. And I'm going to bring this up to maybe let's do 45. So now we can make this object editable. Go to polygon mode and I'm going to select these polygons here and disconnect them. And now we can move these down holding down the shift key and let's move these back maybe a hundred centimeters. Let's grab the polygon pen tool, hold down control, left click and drag on this edge to extrude it out and weld it to this edge. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now we have this round part at the front but at the back the object is square so we have to change the geometry back here. So what I'll do is I'll select these points down here. I'm going to scale these holding down shift and let's scale these to zero. And because the original disk had a diameter of 200 units, I'm going to change the width of these points to 200. Let's go back to the move tool. I'm going to switch on snapping. And I'll snap these points to this point here. Then switch off snapping and move these points back maybe 50 centimeters which is about the distance between these two points. So actually it's 55 so let's go ahead and select these points and move these back to minus 200 in the z-axis. Next I'm going to get rid of half of the object because it's symmetrical and before we continue I'd like to change the geometry a little bit. I don't want these polygons to go to this corner here and also I think I'm going to create a couple more polygons to spread out the geometry a little more evenly. By redirecting the flow of the geometry on the corner we should get a loop going from the front all the way to the back and around the object. So first of all what I'll do is I'll select these two polygons here and I'm going to melt them into a single polygon. And let's delete this point here. And then I'm going to select this edge and use edge cut and let's do maybe five subdivisions should be enough. And I'm going to use the line cut tool. Make sure to switch on single line here. Hold down shift and create two straight cuts like so. And then we can select these two edges and dissolve them. In order to redirect the flow of the geometry I'm going to ring select these edges and use connect points edges to create another edge loop here. 
and then what we can do is select these three points here and I'm going to weld them to this point and that means we can get rid of this edge by dissolving it and we can also select these two polygons here and melt them into a single polygon so we have four-sided polygons everywhere and we've changed the flow of the geometry a little bit so we're getting a loop here and we have this loop here which encapsulates our detail which is the opening to this area here and if you want to you can line up the geometry a little bit so let's go ahead and do that we could select these points here and scale them down go to the move tool switch on snapping and I'm going to use axis extension to line these points up and the way that works is you hold down the control key and then right click on the Z axis let go of the control key and the right mouse button and now you can move the mouse and snap it to here and then hold down your left mouse button and we are getting this white line and we can snap the points to this point over here and I'm going to do the same thing over here so let's just scale these down to zero and let's line these points up with this edge here. Now I'm assuming that this corner here lines up with this line of the opening. So what I'll do is I'll just copy the position of one of these points here and paste it to here to override the position of this point and move it over a bit. Also I want these two polygons to have the same width so what I'll do is I'll just dissolve this edge then select this edge and use connect points edges and this will create a point right at the center of this edge here and now we can select these two points and again use connect points edges to connect these and maybe let's move this point down a bit line it up like this and maybe let's move this one over a bit so next I'm going to select these three edges here and I'm going to use quick extrude so hold down control left click and drag on the Z axis and then also hold down the shift key and let's extrude these back maybe 200 centimeters and that is the basic shape of this top surface here. So now we can turn this into a three-dimensional object. So let's go to polygon mode, select all the polygons, hit D for extrude, and we're going to create caps here. And let's extrude these up. Let's see. Let's do maybe maybe 60 centimeters or so. So let's go for 60. And then I'm going to select these two polygons here and I'm going to extrude those up without caps. And for these I'm going to use maybe a hundred. And next we're going to create this curved top part here. And there's a number of ways you could do that. You could use a disc or a cylinder. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a free plugin called Magic Wedge Extrude, which is by Nitro 4D. So in order to get this curved section here, what I'll do is I'll select these edges here and connect them. And in polygon mode, I'm going to delete these two polygons, then select these two, grab the magic wedge tool. And in order to use this tool, you have to select the polygons you want to extrude and then go to edge mode and select an edge around which you want to extrude the polygons. So in this case, we have to pick either this edge or this edge and then left click and move your mouse up or down to extrude these polygons if you hold down the shift key you can extrude these or rotate these polygons in increments of 10 degrees and I'm going to snap these to the opposite side here and we need some subdivisions And I'll go for 8 here, which is what we used for the disc. We had 16, so half the disc would be 8 rotation segments. And this plugin welds the points at 
this position here but if you switch back to polygon mode you can see we still have the original polygons and they are now inside the geometry so I'm just going to delete those and I'm going to use optimize to make sure we get rid of any points that may still be floating around inside our geometry here over here I'm going to delete these polygons and let's go to edge mode and I'll select these edges here and these ones over here I'm going to use edge cut with one subdivision to connect the geometry here next we're going to create this hole here and for this we're going to use a cylinder let's change the orientation to plus X and I'm going to move the cylinder and snap it to this point here let's move this over a bit so it penetrates the object for the cylinder I'm going to use the same radius that I used for the inner radius of the disk we created at the beginning of this video so let's change the radius to 45 and the rotation segments need to be 16 so it matches the geometry of our other object here and you can see we don't have enough geometry on this object to connect the cylinder to it so we need to add a couple more edges on our object here so let's select this and what I'll do is I'll ring select these edges use edge cut and let's add maybe two subdivisions here and I'm also going to ring select these edges and connect them to uh, spread out the geometry a little more evenly here so now we can add a bool object and I'm going to drag the cylinder as the second child in there and let's change the bool I want to create a single object and I want to hide the new edges now we can make this editable and let's get rid of these edges here so I'm going to dissolve these and let's go to point mode and I'm going to connect the points here and over here and then we can select these edges here and the ones on the other side and I'm going to use edge cut again with two subdivisions so getting these triangles here in the corners I'm going to dissolve these edges here and now we have some n-gons but what we can do to get rid of these n-gons is we can introduce an edge loop up here and connect it to this edge and this edge here so let's go ahead and do that So with these edges selected, again I'm going to use edge cut, we only need one subdivision and we're getting rid of the n-gons. So let's see, I'm going to line these points up a little better. So let's scale these to maybe about here. And we could also select these points and scale them a little bit like so maybe. So if we subdivide this, we're getting a pretty nice and clean looking mesh. Of course, it's still very soft because we don't have any control edges yet. And we're going to take care of the control edges in the next video.